Hey guys, it's DC here and today I wanted to go over the tools I use for OSINT, pen testing and CTFs. Raise it up! So as you can see by the screen here, I've got a bunch of different tabs open. Uh, which is the list of tools that I'm going to go through and sort of why I use them. Now I'm going to start off with CTFs and um, the most common tools that I use there. So let's kick off straight away CTFs. The most common tool that I use in pretty much every CTF is CyberChef. Um, CyberChef is really good because you can cook up a bunch of different things. Uh, for example, if you want to convert from base 64 and then from hex and then uh from a, a hex dump you put in whatever the thing is and it outputs it down the bottom um it's super useful to use um obviously it's not going to work with that input because that's not base 64 hex or hex dump but yeah it's a super useful tool to use in pretty much every ctf that has anything to do with uh, cryptology which is almost every ctf or arg out there the next one I use is md5decrypt.net and I use this one um, mainly to find out what that type of hash is so that I can then um, unencrypt it with Hashcat. And yeah, I type in um, some sort of hash in there and it tells me usually what that kind of hash is and then I can match that hash against uh, a Hashcat mode which I can then run in Hashcat. Um, Hashcat, if you don't know, is used for unencrypting strings or hashes. And uh, yeah, there's, it's got a pretty large list of the different things that you can decrypt. Um, but I use a uh, hash type finder to find out what that is and then I know which mode number to use when I'm, I'm using Hashcat. The next one I use is the EXIF data viewer. And it has a, a pretty useful explanation here, but I'll give you my own. Basically what you do is you put a file in there, it reads the file and gives you all of the EXIF data of that particular picture. Yeah, it's, it's pretty useful to use. You don't have to just use pictures. You can use Photoshop or raw images or DNGs, XMPs, everything there, right? And um, yeah, it, it gives you a whole bunch of detail on basically who made that file, um, where it was made if they had geotagging enabled um all that really good stego information that you might want if um if there's some sort of steganography in that particular ctf um, it doesn't always work it's a sort of a process when doing ctfs to find out uh, what does work and what doesn't but i find this one pretty useful um, and it's web-based which makes it easier as well. The next tool is the Easy Stego CTF LSB Lookup and basically it gives you all of these options up the top here to choose from and you throw in an image just like Exif Viewer and it spits out a huge amount of information. It does full reversing on the image as well so it's going to give you all of that stuff that you would get from Radar. Um, just the spit out basically not like you can't actually play with the file you can just read it um, but yeah it's a it's a pretty useful tool it has so much information and basically I just throw it in there and and type in like CTF or hack the box or something like that and usually that string is available and I know that's kind of like cheating in a way but whatever works right it's it's just a challenge moving on to the OSINT tools that I use we're gonna start off with Shodan now Shodan is a super useful search engine for vulnerable devices out there on the internet. Um, there's a really good story of a guy who wanted lots of people to subscribe to PewDiePie and what he did was he hacked into a bunch of printers that had a vulnerability where he could just loop print uh, multiple different things. So he sent to those printers, sub to PewDiePie and had them on loop and the only way to stop it was to unplug those uh, printers from the wall power and then also unplug the ethernet cable or turn off the Wi-Fi um, so that they wouldn't reconnect once they're plugged back in and that's the only way you could stop them from printing uh, like trees worth of sub to PewDiePie paper. 
It can be used for lots of other things though, like there's lists of um, webcams that are available and yeah, like video game vulnerabilities and you name it, it's all on here and it's, uh, it's a super useful tool. Um, they recently had a promotion where it was $1 for a lifetime membership of the full product, um, which was a huge discount. I'm pretty sure it's like $49, $59 a month for the basic. So um, yeah, that was a really good deal. I did post it up on my channel, so if you missed it, too bad. My next OSINT tool that I use is the Google Hacking Database. And I use this for basically finding uh, vulnerabilities that I can use um, against a, a target to find out more information about them. Um, there was a super useful one in here the other day where you could uh, authenticate against Google's Map API. And I've used it a few times um, to try and basically get access to a Google account and um, yeah, they, they have their own vulnerabilities listed on the GHDB. So if, um, if looking for different vulnerabilities is your thing, this is definitely somewhere to have a look at. Probably my most used OSINT tool is Spiderfoot HX and um, I didn't log into my account here because it sort of there's too much private information in there I guess but basically what I use this for is if I want to find uh, open source information of a particular person or email address or whatever I would type it into Spiderfoot and it builds out a map similar to this that uh, links everything together and it's it's sort of like a how easily trackable are you on the internet test um, there is a free version, there is a couple of paid versions that give you a little bit more access but the free version will give you enough to sort of understand uh, the potential of this sort of product and it, it's, I know you can do all of this stuff yourself by typing searches into Google etc but this one is quite useful because it does all of that legwork for you and it's pretty quick, it takes about one hour to do a scan uh, of this sort of size on the screen so um yeah, it's, it's pretty useful. I, I use this one all the time when doing OSINT. The last OSINT tool I use is WebScan. And I use this to basically just get a bunch of information about a website. Some other scans that I do are things like Whois and um, stuff like that. But yeah, URL scan is super useful for finding uh, information about a website. So as you can see, I've just done a scan here on um, one of my own websites. Uh, airdesker.com and I just wanted to sort of show you the sort of information you can get from here so for example it's it's a Wix website that's true it's got react.js on it that's also true and um, from there you can sort of work out what sort of vulnerabilities are available um, so yeah that's that's sort of what you get there's a whole bunch of HTTP stuff in here as well um, lots of information that you can get in. So all these little JS scripts running in the background, links available on that page, shows all the links to my socials. And um, yeah, it's just, it's really useful to sort of understand what a website is, especially if you're like tracking a target and they, you know they own this website, for example. Don't OSINT me, just by the way. You would then go into this website here and find out a bunch of information and potentially use that to run exploits. It's just like grabbing information to then use later. Now onto pen testing and probably my favorite pen testing tool that I use is Grabify, which is an IP logger. Basically you just, you hide an IP logger in a link, you send them like instagram.com forward slash whatever and say, check out this uh, Instagram profile, blah, 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 blah. You get their IP address and then you can sort of work your way from there, if they click on the link that is. It's a pretty cool tool to use and um, yeah, it's it's probably one of the better IP loggers out there that I've seen anyway. It's nice and easy to use, so that's always good. Um, but yeah, apart from that, um, other tools that I use are like all of the previous tools I've mentioned. I use all of those in uh, very basic pen testing just for uh, information so that I, when I write a report, I can put a whole bunch of information in there and say this is sort of publicly available information that you've got and then continue on with the pen test which depending on what sort of pen test it is 
um, is what sort of tools I would use. But mostly that stuff is custom written scripts or uh, like Metasploit, Burp Suite, etc. All of that sort of stuff just to sort of attack a, a network or um, website or whatever it is. Because it's a, a little bit more of a actual attack rather than just an information gathering exercise. Another great thing to do in a pen test is to do some social engineering, which is basically sweet talking people into giving you free information um, or allowing you access onto a network, which is um, usually the easiest way to break into a network. But yeah, that's sort of the way to go with that one. Anyway, that's all for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave me a like, comment if you have any questions. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.